How's everyone doing? Before I start off, I just want to say I represent everyone with similar tough upbringings as me, but still had the same drive and the same positive aspirations for not only themselves, but for everyone around them. Okay. I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Inglewood is my community. A crime-filled a crime field neighborhood that is notorious for guns, violence, drugs, just about everything negative that contributes to a community's downfall. My freshman year at Harbor High School, I was lost. I was out of place. I didn't fit in with, well with others. It was bad. But at home, it was even worse. My sister's boyfriend was storing guns of just about every kind cocaine, marijuana, all under our roof. And one day the police raided our house and my mother was pulling up and she was immediately arrested because this is her house and technically all these things belong to her. So she was facing some real serious time all because my sister, her daughter, refused to give up her boyfriend. So as a result, she had an aneurysm and slipped into a coma for three years. But that left me, my brother and sisters, homeless. And we bounced between houses and ended up at my auntie's house where there were 20 people living in a four-bedroom apartment. So it was pretty rough. And let me tell you, people can say they love you the same amount as they love their own child, but it's a lie. Because when I had to witness my sisters and brother eat less, and some nights not even have anything to eat at all, that hurt me. And that drove me to go to food flats around the corner and help people to their cars with their groceries for a measly five to $10 a day, ditching school while doing this. So eventually, it wasn't working out with my auntie, and I'm ashamed to say I left my siblings to fend for themselves, you know, and ended up moving with my stepdad. He was a great provider and a, even an amazing guy until he started to drink. That's when he would get both physically and mentally abusive, wanting to fight me like I was a grown man and not remembering anything the next morning. So, of course, that didn't work out. And I ended up moving in with my sister and her boyfriend. Yes, the same one that refused to give themselves up. While there, essentially, I was a wannabe gangster. It's moving drugs, packages that, con that contain drugs, guns, selling them, staying home, all to do these things. And I had nothing inside of me telling me that this was wrong. I was just a naive freshman wanting to make some money. I could have got arrested the next day and not have known what for. Crazy, right? <laughs> but there was somebody that knew that this was wrong. My sister Felicia, other sister Felicia, started dragging me out of the house every morning and making me come to school with her. You know, so while at school one day, I met a man named Mr. Kahn. And he, was, he had told me about this organization that he was starting up called Embark. And he wanted me to attend after school meetings. And, and I was just like, man, I'm not going to them after school meetings, man, get out of my all that. So, <laughs> but let me tell you, he was one persistent fella. He pushed and he pushed until I finally said, okay, man, I'll attend one of your stupid meetings. He had snacks too, so that was a huge motivator. <laughs> so while at the meeting, he said, we're going to go on these many trips throughout the course of the year. And the first trip was to a restaurant. And help me out, people. Restaurant, food plus joke sub equals full tummy. So I went to the restaurant, and after that experience, I just, and Mr. Kahn came up, and he asked me, it was nice, right? Yeah, you like that? I said, yeah, man, get out of my face, yeah. 
but I actually did like it. It was life changing. And after a while, I started to experience new things, get more involved with Embark, and really create something for myself and be active. I met CEOs, executives, producers, getting a behind the scenes look at everything, every experience that we witnessed together, me and my classmates. So, in a sense, I gained a conscience. Embark gave me a conscience because after every one of those trips that I would reflect, I learned that I couldn't do these things anymore. I gotta be those people, those CEOs, those executives, those people that changed my life and gave me those life-changing experiences. So I want to say now, Embark equipped me with the tools to meet the President of the United States of America. I met Michelle too, but that's not important. <laughs> um, I became a CIW Youth Ambassador thanks to Rachel and Jessica, who are in the audience right now, that helped put this whole event together. I'm currently in the second round for the Posse Scholarship, and I'm applying for the Gates Millennium Scholarship. And I don't know what those things may take me. I don't know if I'm going to get them or not, but I know if I hadn't departed from who I was and joined Embark, took that first step, that first leap, I wouldn't have had these options. So I just want to make a challenge to everyone out there, old and young, to depart from who you think you are and become who you are. Step outside your comfort zones, have new experiences, explore the world. Don't let anyone, anything, any struggle stop you from becoming the best you that you can be. Share your story with people because you're somebody. All of you are somebody and you're worth listening to. I want to say thank you. This has been a phenomenal experience and embark on everyone. <laughs>